And so we think about, does God care about us and our loneliness? Does God really care about the thoughts that are going on in my head? Does he care that I'm depressed? And the Bible says that God very clearly cares. And if we would hold on and call upon his name, that he would deliver us. And he's got, the Bible says that he's got plans for us that are beyond our expectations. He says, I want to give you more than you can ever think or imagine or hope for. And a lot of prosperity preachers will, will they'll box that in and say, God wants to prosper you and give you money. And yeah, I believe God wants to prosper you. But I also believe God wants to give you a, a happy marriage and a wife who, who responds to you. And, and, and you, know, you know what I mean? And, and set you free from drug addiction and porn addiction and, and give you and where it's with there was fear when you were afraid of death he wants to fill it with joy that you would have peace at night knowing that you serve a God who loves you isn't it isn't it good I just kind of side note isn't it isn't it for those of us who have experienced this isn't it night and day from what we used to know we still go through hard times but now there's a hope we never had before here's a picture of God's love there are men as I speak who are committing adultery, they're cheating on their wives. There's men who are beating their children. There's wives who are selling their bodies. There are, there are uh, women who are aborting their babies. There are people who are uh, treating other people in a way that human beings shouldn't be treated. But God in his patience for mankind. But God in his love for mankind, the same sun that shines on me and you when we wake up in the morning shines on the sinner. Every day the Bible says he's giving them a chance and an opportunity to repent. That God is giving you an opportunity to hear his love one more time that you will turn from your wicked ways and fall in love with a God who has loved you. We see God's love and his thoughts towards us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you. And I like the way it says that. It says, I know the plans that I have for you. Often we think that we know what God thinks towards us. Right? And let's be honest. Most of the time, it's not good. We think God's upset with us. We think God is, uh, you know, he just saw how we messed up and God's disappointed. But so God makes it a point to say, I know. They're my thoughts and I know them. I know what I think towards you. And you might ask, well, what is it that God thinks towards me? If I could peer into the mind of God and say, and, and really think about the God of all eternity, that he's, what is, what is his thoughts towards me? The scripture answers this and says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. That's, that's God's plan for you. He wants to prosper you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Another question I would ask is, well, how often does God think about me? And that's answered in Psalms 139. The scripture says that if you could count the sand on the seashore, then you could count the number of times that God thinks about you. That's Psalms 139. Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and has, and has found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Man is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of a man. And I believe a woman is the glory of a man because she is, reminds us how much God loves us. Amen. Sometimes I, I, I fail so much. Amen. Hey, women, you can amen there. Sometimes I, I fail so much and I feel so miserable and I wake up in the morning and there's my kids and there's my wife. And I just think, God, how great is your unfailing love that though you knew that I would make these decisions, though you knew that I would fail time after time after time, yet you still found it in the desire of your heart to bless me. You knew that I would make these decisions when you gave me children. You knew that I would make these decisions when you gave me a wife. But yet your love is so unfailing for me that you bless me despite of me. And we see in scripture that God commands that we worship him. And for the unbeliever, that's a very, uh, that's a very dominating scripture. Why do you have a God that commands that you worship him? 
His first commandment is to love him with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our strength. Did you know that God feels that way over you? And the scripture says this in Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. We think it's strange that we were commanded to worship him. But God doesn't just want our words, he wants our heart. In the same way the Bible says that God is so delighted over us that when he thinks about us, all the thoughts in his mind that go on about his plan and his desire to bless us and what he's going to do in our lives and what he's going to do through us and how he's going to use us. And when he thinks about all these things, the Bible says that he begins to sing over us. God never commands anything that he doesn't do himself. And I'm not saying that God worships us. But I'm saying that he loves us and therefore he commands that we should love him in return. I don't think that's a bad deal. What about you? Hey. You okay? What are you doing here? Um, well, I came to say goodbye and to give you this. I'm leaving to Haiti for two months next week. Haiti? But you just got back. Well, they still need help. <laughs> Look, whatever you're going through, Jake, I want you to know that... that I care, and that God cares, and that... God. You're kidding me, right? What God? The God that loves you. You really believe that? Yes, I do. With all my heart. What do you know about real pain, Becca? You're just a, a good little church girl now who's gonna wind up marrying some good little church boy one day and living happily ever after. There's something I never told you. Um, when you were living in Nashville after my father died, my mama flipped out and uh, And I started using every kind of drug I could get a hold of. When my mom found out, she said I could get help or she was kicking me out of the house. And so being the angry person that I was, I just did more and more drugs. And then one day when I was already high, I just wanted to end it all. But just before I cut my wrist, I said a prayer, asking God to forgive me, and he answered, because I heard a voice that said, you need to ask God to save you. <laughs> so do I believe in a God that loves me, that loves you? I saw my dad the other day. Until today, I believed with 
without a doubt I had gone down this road way too far To turn around I'd carry the weight of the past on my back To the day I die But thanks to you Now I realize That every lie that's been told Can be untold And every soul that's been sold Can be unsold Every angry word that's been spoke Can be unspoken And every heart that's been broke be unbroken Hej och välkomna till Pontus funderingar. Mitt namn är Pontus J. Back. Idag ska vi fundera på om Gud verkligen hör våra rop på hjälp. Jag vill påstå och jag vill säga att det är sant att han hör våra böner, han hör våra rop. Men Gud är ingen Gud som tycker om tomma ord. Han söker ett öppet hjärta. Idag ska ni få möta Michael Bull Roberts, en av mina mycket goda och kära vänner. Han är en tidigare gangster som höll på med mycket kriminalitet. Dagen då han skulle ta sitt eget liv, han höll på att bli gällslagen, gömde sig på ett hotellrum med brutna ben och hjärnskador. Där på golvet så ropar han ut till Gud. Det enda han ville veta det är vad kärlek är. But I was never been broken. You could never break me because I didn't care. I was so evil inside. Now I knew I had a heart when I was a kid. I was the kind of kid that brought home the kittens that I would find and feed them, you know? But that boy was long, long lost. So that, that day on the hotel room floor, I'm looking up and I'm cursing God out. I says, you know, where were you when I was a kid? And I used to sit on the end of my bed rocking back and forth every day. Why, God? You're not real, right? Just, I don't know why it came over me. I was just there and I says, you know what? But that day on the hotel room floor, was the first time I ever told myself, you know what, I'm going to die today. I'm done. If I can get to the bathroom, I'm going to find something in the bathroom. I'm going to end it. I'm going to take a razor. I'm going to cut my juggler, bleed out, and die. And that day, I came to my peace on the floor that I'm, I'm going to die today. And I said, God, I have one more deal, just one. Before I die today, before I go, all my life, okay, I've never known the love of a woman. I've never known the love of family. I've never known the love of nobody. And anyway, be, but before I die today, there's only one thing I want to know, and there's only one thing I want to feel. I want to know what love is. The second I said it, man, holy shit. My heart was so full of love. It was incredible, man. And I swear it was like God, I, if it was Jesus Christ himself, If it was an angel, something was holding me on the floor. And it was holding me tight. And my heart was so soft that everything changed. Like my heart just filled up and I couldn't stop crying. And I cried for hours on the floor. And I couldn't believe that I ever doubted that there was a God. I couldn't believe it. And I begged and I begged forgiveness. And I had no doubt in my mind at all that I'd been forgiven. Because I felt in my heart that everything was okay. Don't worry about nothing. I got you, you know. And I know there was on the floor with me, and an angel or Jesus, whichever. I know there was something on the floor from God that was holding me. Something was holding me. Är det inte fantastiskt att höra de människor berättar om då de har fått uppleva Guds kärlek? Som Michael sa, det var någonting som höll om mig. Precis samma sak kan ske för dig där hemma, oavsett var du är. Då du behöver Gud ropa till honom. Han hör din bön. Vi ses igen. 
par välsignade. And we give God the praise. I am excited that God has sent these young men in here tonight to minister under the anointing of God. We've got another on fire young man here, Brandon the Rep, Kegel. The Rep is his moniker, it's his, his nickname. He's a successful rap artist. Music videos play on, here on TV and JCTV and others. Uh, he's got a tremendous testimony and a tremendous work of grace that God has done in his life. I was reading. Uh, his testimony and just talking to him. It, it is just amazing the work of grace that God has done in this young man's life. So I want you to put your hands together and welcome to Praise the Lord tonight, Brandon Barrett Kager. Come on, give him a real good God bless you. We bless you, man. Good to see you. And uh, thank God for you being here. And man, what a testimony. What yeah. a work of grace God has done in your life. Tell us a little bit about who Brandon Kago is yeah. and what God has done for you. Yeah, definitely. Well, I... I um I gave my life to Christ when I was 18. That's, that's where it all began. But I'm, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I was, uh, I'm a triplet. I have two sisters of the same age as me. And you're, you're a triplet? Yeah, I okay. am. I am. So, Jesse, Shane, if you're watching, uh, God bless you. Um, so, uh, and then I had an older brother. He was a year and a half older than us. And, uh, you know, can you imagine going to the, the hospital and finding out, you know, your wife is pregnant, and in this case, my mom finding out that she's pregnant, and they ask, is it a boy or a girl? I said, well, actually, it's both. <laughs> and one. You and know what one, I mean? Right, and right. one. And one. And one. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so my mom, uh, it was just too much without having the hope of Christ in her life. She just uh, didn't know how she was going to uh, make do. And so at you the, weren't raised in a Christian home either. No, no, no. I wasn't raised in a, in a Christian home at all. Um, so my mom left when I was about three years old. Um, she got involved, heavily involved, uh, in, in her she got addicted to heroin, got involved okay. with a motorcycle gang, uh, Hell's Angels. Okay. And, uh, you know, and my father, my dad is a, is a great man. Uh, he raised us the best way that he knew how. And uh, God bless you, Dad, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but he, my, my father taught me, he taught the family that whatever you believe is true for you. And so we kind of took that to heart and uh, didn't grow up believing in Jesus, actually kind of grew up with a hatred for Christianity. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, that, that began to spiral. So we began to say, well, what, what makes us happy? My brother got involved in drugs. He got me to smoke my first joint when I was about 13 years old. And from there, that also spiraled. I started uh, smoking Sherm, which is uh, uh, a chemical that they use to preserve dead bodies with, dip it in a cigarette. and. And, uh, you know, some wow. people die off the first hit, and, and I, I, I grew a liking to it. Well, meanwhile, my brother grew a liking wow. to methamphetamines. He got addicted to methamphetamines. Now, how old, your brother was a year and a half older than my you? Year, my brother was a year and a half older than okay. me. Now, at the age of 16, I get a phone call. I'm at school. They asked me to come to the principal's office. And, you know, when you get called to the principal's office, right. it wasn't a good thing, <laughs> right, you know? Right, right. So I'm already like, man, this is not good. Well, uh, what's different this time is that there's a teacher meeting me halfway. And, and she's got a look in her eyes of compassion, and, uh, and she begins to put her arm around my shoulders, and a tear begins to drop from her face. And I'm thinking, you know, this teacher never cared about me before. Why does she care about me now? Right. And she whispers in my ear and says, son, your father called and said that your mother committed suicide. Jesus. I was 16 years old. I lost my mom. 16? 16. And you're in school? Uh, yeah. When and this I, uh, yeah, yeah. When I, when, wow. I got the, when I found out, she shot herself in the, in the head with a shotgun. Um, Jesus, so now, Jesus, Jesus, I'm Jesus. living with, with, without a mother. I have, no, uh, I have the direction of my father, but my father's always working. And, you know, needless to say, to take care of four kids. Uh, my brother's right. addicted to methamphetamines. Well, when, uh, as we got older, he decided to, I dropped out of high school, and he decided that uh, it would be better if he moved to Alaska. Uh, he, he got married, uh, found a beautiful wife. Uh, had a son, a beautiful son. His name is Josh, Josh Jr. Okay. And, um, well, in his meth addiction, he began, uh, you know, to be uh, abusive verbally, and, and um, you know, I won't get into all of that. But right, right, right. one night, at, uh, one morning at six o'clock in the morning, as, as uh, I recall, uh, reading the newspaper article online, um, that my my brother had uh, gotten into an argument uh, with him as she was as he was going to pick up his son. At six o'clock in the morning, they began, uh, you know, getting into a fight and an argument. The cousin of his wife hears about it walks outside with a gun Jesus. and murders my brother. 
Jesus. I lose Jesus, my Jesus. brother. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind. Because How old are you now, Brandon? I'm I'm 32 years old. I mean, no. When when, when this happens, when your brother. I was uh, yeah. I would think it was about 20, 26. Okay. 26 right. years old. So I had already found Christ because I was I was 18 when I found Jesus. So I now know where my life would have headed because I was followed in my brother's footsteps. Yeah. I now know where my life would have ended had I would had had something not have happened. And so yeah. let me tell you what happened. Yeah. I move out of a crack house. I call my sister. I say, I say, can you? And I didn't move out because I was trying to get my life right. I moved out because we all lost our jobs. <laughs> so, which happens when you're smoking crack, right? I, I, I'm not laughing, but just the way no, you no, said I'm it. With you, I'm with you. <laughs> so, uh, so I called up my sister. Said, hey, can you get me a job? So she gets me a job. You know, working on the other side of town. I'm doing telemarketing. <laughs> and uh, now across the street. From, from where I'm now living, this new apartment that I'm in, I'm all by myself, and now, and now I'm having to face myself, yeah. realizing that my friends are, are fake. They were only there when I had weed to smoke. And, you know, I mean, you know, the whole nine yards. So uh, you've been in ministry long enough. I don't know all your background, but you've been in ministry long yeah. enough to know, know where I'm going with this. I get so, it. I get it. Um, so across the street from the apartment is this church. Now, it might sound familiar to some of the viewers out here. It's called Phoenix First Assembly in Phoenix, Arizona, Pastor Tommy, Tommy Barnett. Barnett. Yeah. So uh, when you, you were smoking crack, right, across from Tommy Barnett's church? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Go ahead. Hold, hold the applause because it gets better. It gets better. So I look, and, and now he owns, uh, you know, a huge property, yeah, and part yeah, of this property yeah. is a huge mountain. We live in Phoenix, Arizona. There's mountains. Right, right. And so I said to myself, well, you know, that would be a, a, a great place to go smoke a joint. <laughs> On top of the mountain. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. On top of the mountain. So now, now uh, backtrack, because what I didn't know, and it wouldn't have made a difference at the time, because, again, I didn't believe in Jesus. Uh, matter of fact, I hated Christianity. But uh, come to find out later that this is where Pastor Tommy Barnett and all his disciples and the, and the uh, assistant pastors, they go up there, they pray. They pray, yeah. They, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they make sacrifices. Not, not, not those type of sacrifices, but, you know. Might take their sins, write them on paper, burn, burn it, you know, something like that. So, so the mountain is anointed. I didn't know, even know what the word anointed meant right. then. Right. I thought maybe it was something you dip and smoke. I don't, you know, I didn't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where I is this going? This. Where no, is this no, going? No, 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 I love no. this because you are completely unchurched, man. Totally. So, so you're, completely. You're, you're doing it real. Now, this is what Christians need to know. Yeah, Talk. yeah, yeah. Well, God yeah. is real. God yeah. is real. Yeah. Well, God is real. I love it. I love it. Keep going. So, so I go up to this mountain, and, uh, and as I'm, I'm, I, I light up my joint, I begin smoking it. And as I'm smoking it, uh, I begin to pray. Because I believed in God, but I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. Got it. So I didn't pray, Lord. I, here was my prayer. My prayer was simply this. God, life sucks. There's got to be more than life than this. And as I began to pray, I started crying. I never, I never prayed like this, where I really, you know, meant it. And, and she tears. was on that anointed mountain, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, at this point, at this point, <laughs> at this point, the joint had went out. And I don't know if it went out because my prayer was long. Or right, right. An angel, when I turned around, an angel said, you know, I don't know. But I, I was crying out to God. And I said, and I said, God, you know, there's got to be. It's got to be more than life than this. And my one desire, even from when I was a kid, and maybe it was because I didn't have a mom growing up, I don't know, but I always had a desire for a wife. I mm. always had a desire, you know. Wow. So I, I prayed, God, and my, my exact prayer was, um, there was a song on the radio that said, Ride or Die Chick. I don't know if you remember that. I, I, I do remember. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Um, and so that was my prayer. I said, God, I, I want to ride or die you chick. You want to ride or die? You said this to Jesus. I love it. Go ahead. So uh, right. about three days later, I, I'm in my apartment, probably smoking weed at the time, and I get a phone call from, uh, from her cousin. And I, we, you know, we kind of ran the streets together. And, you know, right. Um, and so she calls me up saying, uh, you know, hey, have you seen my cousin? No, I haven't seen her. And, and of course, you know, I mean, you know, she was attracted to me already. So, right. you know, so it, it, it you know, the, the conversation went a little longer and, and, uh, okay, so here's what happened. Well, let me fast forward. We've been, we've been married now. I've been together for 14 years, been married for 11 years now. Okay. And, uh, amen, amen. 
By the way, before I go any further, if my daughter, I have a, a son, his name is LeBron, he's uh, seven years old, my daughter is, uh, is five years old, she just turned five today. Wow. So, a shy happy birthday. Wonderful. Happy birthday. I wouldn't have any of this if it wasn't for Jesus. I understand. So, uh, so her mom now is a, is a, I gotta paint this picture. I know we don't have a lot of time, but no, I gotta I mean, paint this picture. Her mom is a, is a prestigious, uh, and I know she's watching, so I gotta be careful. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jamaican, okay, um, you know, right. so, so uh, they don't mess around, let's right, just put right. it like that. <laughs> uh, you know, a uh, godly woman. Right. Now here I come, I, was, I didn't even have enough, uh, you know, common sense to meet her mom sober. So my eyes are bloodshot red. So years later she ends up telling me, I, I've been praying for you. And I was like, yeah, and I, she said, well, yeah, my prayer was, God, get this man out of my daughter's life. <laughs> So, all right. <laughs> she said, and the next words out of her mouth I'll never forget. She said, and I heard the Lord say, be gentle with him. I have plans for him. Wow. Wow. You know? Wow. Months went by. Well, that is awesome. Months went by, and, and, and uh, maybe she forgot what the Lord said. I don't know, but <laughs> she said she began to pray again. God, you, you promised that my daughter would marry a man of God, and... And, uh, you know, get this man out of my daughter's life. He is, he's addicted to drugs, and this is, this is not good. And she said she heard it again. She heard the Lord say, be gentle with him. I have plans for him. Well, that is just so well here's what she did. She went, she went to the store and bought a Bible. She gave me the Bible. The last time I had Bible, a, a Bible in my hand, I was tearing pages out of it, smoking, using it as joint paper. So here I am. Wow. I don't know anything about did Jesus Christ. Did you hear what he said? Okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I don't know anything about scripture. I don't know, uh, and I don't care to know. I right. thought, you know, Christianity, Jesus Christ dying on the cross, it doesn't make any sense, and yada, yada, yada. And um, so here I am, I'm in my apartment, and I, hey, there's this Bible. Now, I'm not going to smoke this one, because this is an $80 <laughs> leather bonded, gold trim Bible. I'm not going to smoke so this I'm one. So I'm not going to smoke this one. Right. So I began reading, and, and I remember my thought was, you know, everybody has an opinion about Jesus. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody, or excuse me, this, this Bible. Everyone's got an opinion about this Bible. They either love it or they hate it. Right. Uh, you know, in my family, we had a very strong opinion about it. Uh, it wasn't a good one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I had an opinion about it, and I, and I never even read it. Right. So what, what could it possibly say that has the whole world in an uproar? And I began wow. smoking and, and reading, and as I began... <laughs> As I began reading, now I love the way I love that you're keeping it real, man. Go ahead. I love it. Well, let me just say this on that note. You know, God will he'll he'll hit you where you're at. Yeah. You know, a lot of times yeah. we think I can't I can't go to church because yeah. I'm, I'm too messed up. Yeah. He'll he'll meet you at the point That's of it. your need. That's it. That's where he shows up. That's it. Go ahead. So uh, I just began reading. I, I didn't know where to start. I, you know, I, I, I didn't even know half the words that were in the Bible. One of the words I, I never understood was the word uh, humble. I read that in the Bible. I, I didn't know what it meant. So all these scriptures I began reading, the, you know, a lot of them weren't making sense. But then I'd read some stuff, and I'd be like, you know, that's, that's true. You can't deny that. And then yeah. I'd read something else. And be like, that's true. And one day I read Romans 7, and kind of paraphrasing, you know, it says, why do I do the things that I know that yeah. I ought not to do? Yeah. The things that I know that I should do, these are the things that I don't do. Right. The things that I know that I shouldn't do, yet yeah, these are the things that I keep on doing. Yeah. And so I find this law at work that wherever the opportunity to do good is, evil is right there with me. Yes, yeah. And then it says, but thank God for Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and Hallelujah. When I read that scripture, I remember I, I, it was one of those moments. It, it really was. It was a holy moment. I, I got chills on my body. I put the Bible Glory down, and I, my God. thought was, this has to be true. I've never heard somebody relate to the Glory internal struggle to of mankind to be this real. That was my thought. I've never heard anybody be this real. This has to be what people say is the word of God now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank if it's the word of God. Whew. What does it say wow. about this man, Jesus? Does it say that he is the son of God? Or is that what people have said? Because I believe that this is the word of God. So whatever wow. it says, I'm going to believe. And this is you alone with a Bible. That's it. Now, meanwhile, I'm also... No, no, no I'm saying that because, man, that word is alive. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, living yeah. word. Yeah. Go ahead. Finish it. Finish it, man. Now, I have to say, 
in between time on, on Wednesday nights, I'm going to uh, to to uh, the church across the street, Phoenix yeah. First Assembly. Yeah. And so, you know, I was getting, uh, you started getting fed there. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I would cry as Pastor Tom Marie Barnett was preaching. I didn't understand why. Um, but, you know, God just began to, to minister to me. And, and as, I, wow. as I began to seek God, is this really you? And there was one, one, one other scripture I'll just share that really solidified it all for me. I was sitting in my apartment and I, and I read Jesus and he said this. He said, he who hears my words and does not put them into action is like a man who has built his house on the sand. Yeah. And he says, uh, and then when the waves come Thank and the Lord. wind beats against that house, uh, it falls with a great crash. But he who hears my word and Thank puts you, them into action you, is like a man who built his house on the rock. And when the waves come and the storm beats against that house, that house Hallelujah. will not fall. And I began to look, uh, this was my thought as I'm reading this scripture. I began to look around my life and I didn't know anything about Jesus Christ. But all I knew was I had seen the devastation of what it's like to live outside of faith. I had seen, and when I, I want to be specific when I say faith. I'm not talking about faith, believing that there's a God. No, believing that Jesus Christ is the only way, that he's the only truth. Yeah, 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 I had yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd seen the result yeah, of what it's yeah. like to live believing whatever comes by and that this has to be truth. And I've seen men, men stumble and fall and, and ultimately lead to death as in the case of, of my family members. And I said, but what I haven't seen, what I haven't experienced is what Jesus is referring to of those who put his word into action. And it says that their life prospers yeah. and in every way their marriage prospers. And of course, you know, this is deeper revelation that I, that I understood later. But in this moment, it was just I need, I need this. Yeah. I, I need this. And from that moment, I'm, I'm tell, tell you now, I'm 32 years old. I gave my life to Jesus Christ when I was 18. Yeah. And the same God that spared me then is the same God that's with me today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey! No, you, somebody needs to shout about that right there. That's a, that's a miracle of the grace of Almighty God. I, I mean, man, this is, I mean, this is, this is a, an outstanding testimony of the grace, the mercy, the power, the goodness of God. Here is a woman who hears from God and God tells her he's got his hand on you. And, and this causes her to give you a Bible and that Bible begins to come alive to you. I, 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 look into the camera, man, and, and, and talk to somebody who is where Brandon Cagle was yeah, yeah. and minister to him. Can I do this? Can I, I have a verse I want to share. Can, I, whatever, can I share it? Whatever's on your heart, man. Listen, I'm so, this is a true story. I'm so tired of falling. If this Tylenol could numb the pain, no extra strength but a firearm would. I got a friend who survived the shot. Suicide, humans die, say goodbye, then say hi to God. She said a prayer before she pulled the trigger. Lord, if it be your will, I apologize, I swear, so please forgive me. And then the hammer clicked. The devil and his demons laugh for entertainment like they staring through a camera lens. She's on the doctor's table operating. She said that's when she left the body. Nurses screaming like they lost a patient. And she woke up in hell, so goes to tell that it was hotter than the barrel of the gun that she shot her face with. Wow. And to make things even worse, she can hear herself falling while they're calling out a name that wasn't even hers. And she's like, dang, I'm dying. Jesus. And no one even knows my name. What a shame that I am. Like an insane asylum, the way they tie me to this bed to stitch my face together. My name's a waste of letters, colder than the late December. That's when she heard God say, I did not forget you. I know your name and I would twice hang on a cross to get you. And the scars on your face that I'm going to leave you with are to remind you that from this day it's for me you live. And his story is so bittersweet because I know if God could deliver her, then surely he'll deliver me. And I just want to tell you that wherever you're at, that God loves you, that God has a plan for your life. And the scripture says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Wherever you're at right now, I just challenge you. Call upon his name. Say, God, you know where I'm at. You know what I've been through. I call upon your name. Save me. Call upon the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that anyone who calls upon his name will not be disappointed. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen to me. You may not understand everything that you're feeling right now. 
But the scripture is clear. You cannot come to Christ anytime you want to. You can only come when the Spirit of God is dealing with your heart. Those thoughts that you're thinking, those images that have been running through your mind, those things that have been coming up from your past, these are not humanly devised. These are not naturally drummed up. The Holy Spirit is dealing with you. And the very fact that you're feeling what you're feeling means you haven't gone too far, you haven't done too much, you're not too far away. You are very near to God right now. And he is very near to you. As Brandon spoke about the work of God in his life, and you heard him rhyme there, he's, he's a rapper, he's, he's gifted. God uses him in this way. God can take the gifts, the talents that he's given you. I know churches may not have said you can do it, but Jesus will use what you got if you'll give it to him. And so he just ministered to you again. Please, I plead with you, call the number that's on your screen. There are men and women who have done nothing else today but wait for you to call so that they can minister the gospel to you. Here's a witness. I'm a witness. I'm, I've got a room full of witnesses. Jesus does what he says he does. He saves. He forgives. He heals. He delivers. He sets free. And that is what will happen to you when you call. I want you to praise God with me for people right now going to the phone and giving their heart to Jesus Christ. Let's do it in faith. Let's do it right now. And let's thank God for Brandon Tago and the work of God in his life. God bless you, man. Awesome. I remember laying in my bedroom floor thinking that life was over. I was suicidal, I was broken into a million pieces. I mean, a girl had just left me, walked out of my life, was supposed to marry her, and now she leaves for another man. Now I walk away from everything that was important, my career, my church, my ministry, my television ministry, my radio ministry. I was broken, shattered, devastated. And you see, I had grown up thinking that you had to be perfect for God, not only to love you, but definitely for him to use you. And, and here I am in the darkest, worst, most horrific moment of my life. And all of a sudden, a little voice spoke to me. You see, here I am crying out to God. And I don't know if you've ever been there, but I mean, I was at that moment where I cry and I call out, God, where are you? How is it that you could allow this to happen to me? I mean, I've done so much for you. I've given my life for you, and now you let everything fall down around. Don't you know that I wanted to reach millions and millions of people for you, and now you just leave me broken? And it was in that moment that he reminded me that the mission that I had been on to reach millions, well, isn't it funny how a lot of times our problems are actually part of God's plan? I remember him taking me to the story of the five loaves and the two fishes. You see, it was that he had to feed 5,000 plus women and children, 15 to 20,000 people, and yet five loaves and two fishes weren't enough. But look at what the Bible says. It says that when Jesus took the five loaves and two fishes, he broke them and he blessed them. You see, a lot of times, that's the beauty of broken things, is that God has to break something in order to bless it. And I remember God speaking to me in that still, small voice and saying, remember how you prayed that you wanted to reach millions? Well, you just weren't enough. I had to break you into millions of pieces in order to feed you to millions of people. I want you to know right now that you may be in the broken, the most broken state of your life. And you're thinking that there's no way that God could ever love you, much less ever use you. But I want you to know you're wrong. If you are broken, if you are shattered, well, you're a perfect candidate for the grace of God to clean you up and, and put you on a pedestal like a shining diamond. I am a testimony to the fact that God finds beauty in broken things. So God bless you. I hope that this has encouraged you today. Please take a moment. There's somebody in your timeline, your newsfeed, or your friend list that needs to hear this message. You have no idea who it is around you that is broken and needs a word of encouragement. So please take a moment and click share on the side of the bottom of this video. Like and comment below. If you're not my friend already on Facebook, click my name at the top of the video and let's be friends. God bless. Have a very, very beautiful day.
After I shot myself, I was conscious. I couldn't see. I heard everything. I heard my boyfriend screaming. So I remember feeling around. The recoil of the weapon was so powerful, it took me from being on my hands and my knees on the floor to sitting on the bed. It threw me on the bed. And I remember the first thing I thought was, oh my God, I did it. I did it. Like, I can't believe I did it. I'm so tired of falling. If this talent all could numb the pain, no extra strength, but a fire on wood. I got a friend who survived the shot. Suicide, humans die. Say goodbye and say hi to God. She said a prayer for she pulled the trigger. Lord, if it be your will, I apologize. Swear, so please forgive me. And then the hammer clicked. The devil and his demons left entertainment like they staring through a camera lens. She's on the doctor's table operating. She said it's when she left the body. Nurses screaming like they lost a patient. And she woke up in hell, so goes the tale that it was hotter than the barrel of the gun that she shot her face with. And to make things even worse, she can hear herself falling while they're calling out a name that wasn't even hers. And she's like, dang, I'm dying. And no one even knows my name. What a shame that I am. Like an insane asylum. The way they tie me to this bed is just my face together. My name's a waste of letters, colder than a late December. That's when she heard God say, I did not forget you. I know your name, and I would twice hang on that cross to get you. And the scars in your face that I'ma leave you with are there to remind you that from this day it's for me you live. And her story is so bittersweet. Cause I know if God could deliver her, then surely he'll deliver me. I'm sitting in my room and I wonder what it is that you see when you look at me. Is this how it is? I don't wanna pretend like I'm something that I'll never be. Lord, pick me up cause I don't wanna fall again. And save me, save me from this prison in my head. So there's no one else to blame or point the fingers at. If life's a sad, sad song, then where the singers at? Love just flies away. I guess that's why these artists always seem to draw the red hawk with the wings attached. Life is short, time is borrowed like the tweaker who just never brought my speakers back. Mr. Deacon, please don't put me where the preacher sat. Cause I don't own a suit and I just might stand your carpet. Cause lately, to be honest, all this dirt I'm walking in has turned my sneakers black. My wife's the best of me and I'm the weaker half. If life's a recipe, I'm sick of eating that. But come to death of me, I rest in peace. This pure ecstasy, so let it be. Put that on everything that Jesus has. But thou shalt not swear. So my words are locked there in a freezer bag. They just melt away. Talk is cheap, can't afford the price if there is hell to pay. So I'm feeling kinda nervous, and my stomach's turning at the dinner table like I'm hoping someone else could pray. All my selfish ways, I've been caught red handed like the kid who stuck his finger inside a velvet cake. Sitting in my room and I wonder what it is that you see when you look at me Is this how it is? I don't wanna pretend like I'm something that I'll never be Lord, pick me up cause I don't wanna fall again And save me, save me from this prison in my head Kids look up to me, it's like they think I'm perfect See I'm drying and sinking, barely breathing, trying to reach the surface my songs speak to him like I'm preaching sermons And the pastor at his church sounds like he's speaking German But I just wonder if he knows that I got problems of my own And I'm following this road, but I ain't perfect neither That's why I need God His grace keeps me from flipping out of my wife And packing my bags at night to leave her And trust me, I done thought about it And not one homie was around that I could call on Like, dog, I'm drowning They just left me drinking oceans Trying to swallow mountains Walking the tightrope during the earthquake I'm all unbalanced But I'm convinced that he was there When no one was Satan gives the evil stare, but Romans 1 says I am not ashamed, and I am not ashamed, so even when it's all over, I still overcome. I'm sitting in my room, and I wonder what it is that you see when you look at me. Is this how it is? I don't want to pretend like I'm something that I'll never be. Lord, pick me up, cause I don't want to fall again. And save me, save me. From this prison in my head From this prison in my head From this prison in my head Ever since a kid, I've been nothing but a piece of dirt Sitting
sitting in my kindergarten Staring up my teacher's skirt Must have been a piece of work Was a bad seat from birth Mama's on the phone again But every time we speak it hurts Cause every time we talk She just mumbles off that bike And then mama, I gotta go My G.I. Joe just beat up Spider-Man Alright then, I see you later Cause you're coming back, I hope I said I see you later But we both know that that's a joke So ever since, I never learned how to control my anger Oddly enough, this is one letter short of danger So like an orphan, I would often just distort my language Like blank this or blank that, my mind's a torture chamber And it's filled with porn, it must be from these pills I'm on your cup runs over, mine's is empty, must be spilled, it's gone I could've swore I was right, but let's be real, I was wrong That's when I cried out, Lord Jesus, let your will be so done I'm sitting on the block and I'm thinking about my destiny I'm wondering what will become the death of me Should've been that body that they found up in a riverbed Or another pervert stuck surfing the internet Purchasing cigarettes, put my life away like a lazy coward So addicted to coke, I'm sniffing baby powder But God changed my life, flipped it to a 180 Dumb crazy, should've left me somewhere getting drunk Wasted, waking up in the morning in a corner of some basement Smothered in my own vomit, slumped into my own coffin I have been reborn again, I am like an ornament Hanging from a Christmas tree in the middle of an orphanage Giving hope to the unfortunate and those that can't afford to live and mothers who know oh too well just what an abortion is yes life is but a dream but it is so much more than this more than just working nine to five to pay your mortgages you will become the child of god that you was blessed to be you was born to magnify the lord this is your destiny so i'm sitting on the block and i'm thinking about my destiny i'm wondering what will become the death of me my life will i live a legacy so i'm in the kitchen and i'm cooking up a recipe Sitting on the block and I'm thinking about my destiny I'm wondering what will become the death of me My life, will I live a legacy? So I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking up a recipe Mirror, mirror in the toilet, who's the illest? Can you call it? You reflect an alcoholic cause I'm dressed up in this vomit With a silly grin on my face like I'm blessed to be retarded Living breath of me departed, now my flesh is the incarnate Thinking death to me is foreign but it's moving on me quicker So liquor without a warning, feeling sicker in the morning Typical symptoms of a pitiful victim, sin is befallen And the pain makes it hard for me to try to keep my soul still Sticky fingers go still, broke out of Brokeville And this candy has my brains looking like some oatmeal The highway to hell is fast but looks like the road still But thank God for Christ who has mercy on the roadkill So to repent is why I be seeing folks kneel The world is only cold cause we don't know how his coat feels Daddy's love is so real, blood like some soap spilled And it's worth the water to wash self from your will so I'm sitting on the block and I'm thinking about my destiny I'm wondering what will become the death of me My life, will I live a legacy? So I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking up a recipe Sitting on the block and I'm thinking about my destiny I'm wondering what will become the death of me My life, will I live a legacy? So I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking up a recipe Recipe, 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 recipe. Cooking up a recipe